it's John and Mike, brew-dudes.com, and we have beers in front of us, and this is the product of one of Mike's, another experiment from Mr. Mike. He has uh, brewed in a bag. I brewed in a bag. And this isn't just like my silly one gallon batches. Yeah. This is a full on, how many yeah. gallons did you do? This baby is a two gallon batch of beer. Oh, come on, man. I thought this was gonna <laughs> be like five or 10 gallons. No, man, no, man. I'm uh, interested in the brew in a bag process. Okay. Mainly from um, using it as a, a cheap and easy, fast way to get to a smaller batch size. Okay. For doing more experiments with ingredients, et cetera, et cetera. You're gonna see more beers come out that I went through the brew in the bag process, but I'm also using it as, a, as an attempt to just understand how brew in a bag works. The process. Like, not like works from a standpoint of hot water, bag, grain, come, but like the ins and outs, like w grain absorption, yeah. temperature um, fluctuations, things like how does crush affect brew in a bag? How does, you know, can you do a step mash in a brew in a bag? I love things it. like that. That's like the long term thing. Good. But anyway, what I needed to do was a first pass beer, like with the equipment I have you know, in the bags I have, whatever, can I make a beer? Yeah. Can I make a beer? And, and then I also want to understand, like, if I'm just doing a two gallon batch, like what the losses are, mm -hmm. you know, how am I gonna, you know, so this is this was a two gallon ferment and I probably got about a gallon, almost three quarters into a keg that I fully purged with CO2 before I put it in because I didn't want it to oxidize. And I hope the yellow color demonstrates that. This I'm beer, up to that. I will. This beer, this this mine, mine's a little hazier than John's is, but that's because uh, this was like the first pour off the keg, and I don't want to waste beer because only two gallons of beer. <laughs> now you know my. Um, so uh, anyway, this is just so this was a two gallon batch in the end. This is four and a half gallon, four and a half pounds of Pilsner malt. You haven't even told me the style yet. What do you think the style is? It's a Kolsch. It's a Kolsch. Yeah. yeah, so, and the only reason I'm calling it a Kolsch is because it's Pilsner Malt and Kolsch yeast. <laughs> um, so, because that's what I had, I wanted to make something, you know, light and just, yep. I just I just had this Pilsner Malt and I figured, let me see, how much Pilsner Malt can I fit in a bag in a, I have a three gallon pot um, on a on my burner and how much malt can I fit in there with with the water? So this was nine quarts of strike water Mm. Uh, that I heated up to about 158F and I, uh, Fahrenheit and I accomplished uh, with the bag about um, 145 degrees Fahrenheit was my mash temp, my strike, my, uh, my actual mash temperature. So the first observation that I actually made was that I could probably, so this is four and a half pounds, I could probably squeeze five pounds in there. Um, but what's interesting, this resulted in a starting gravity of 1052. So that's probably covers like 80% of beer styles, 1052 down, probably mm -hmm. pretty good. So that's that's nice. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I was really blown away by is I just used a stainless steel pot, nothing special, with the bag in there. Um, I sort of twisted the top up and I put the, the lid of the pot, nothing special, um, on top of it during the mash. I, I, I only mashed this for 40 minutes because I, you know, it's going to convert pretty quick. Um, I only did a single crush. I eventually want to play with double crushing because one of the things with brewing a bag is you can get, you can rescue some of the efficiency issues with brewing a bag with mm. like really finely crushing because you're not going to exactly. louder it. Um, so one of the other cool things was I was really surprised that at the end of 40 minute mash, my resulting temperature into this was like 143. And the garage was pretty cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, so actually, I was really surprised how much a closed pot packed full with water and grain, no like extra yeah. headspace or whatever, yeah. actually held temperature pretty well with no insulation whatsoever. Mm. Um, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. So that's cool. Um, then I pulled the bag. So here's the so the other observation was I pulled the bag out and I just held it, held it there for a bit, let it drain. But I have I have another pot that has like a spaghetti like insert. So I just I, I didn't want to sit there and watch the thing stupid thing drip. So I I put it in that thing which sits off the bottom of the next pot by like an inch. So I let that just drip into the next pot while I started to get the boil up and got my hops ready. Um, so what's cool is then so after about you know, 10 minutes while right before the thing came to boil, I lifted out the strainer thing and, and, and looked at what was left in there. There's maybe eight ounces, like a half a cup or a cup of, of uh, wort had just 
dripped out of the bag more. Okay. So I put that in the pot, and then I, I put the, the strainer thing with the bag back in the thing, and I pick the bag up and I squeeze it a little bit, I push it against the sides, I used a spoon, because sometimes people talk about, oh, squeeze the bag to get that much more out of it. Those people are crazy. <laughs> because you know what I got out of the bag after just letting it sit? No, granted, I only a recovered a burn? cup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, got a, I got like another, not even a half a cup out of it. So mm. it's, not, it's not, so at least at that stage, first pass, please don't, write to me and say, I squeeze my bag. And I'm going to do more bit bag squeezing in the future. No, to worry. Um, but I didn't get much more out of it. So I was just like, oh, that, so that'll be, that's another thing that I'm going to look into with brewing a bag. But I incorporated that. Um, <laughs> then the other thing, I use my immersion chiller. Yep. I, you know, my big batches, I use a plate chiller. Yeah. Immersion, so the one thing was interesting is that my plate chiller, my immersion chiller, I chill it down pretty quick. Sure, um, two gallons. But the the straining of the wort, it's pretty cloudy, right? It's, it's much yeah. more cloudy than when you're doing a, a traditional louder, mm -hmm. and you can sort of whirl off and clear yeah. up. Yeah. So it's pretty cloudy. Um, the amount of trube in the kettle that then went into the fermenter, because I didn't try to, I didn't even really, I wasn't gonna sit there and wait. I just wanna try to do this process as quick as possible. The amount of trube that was in, I mean, it looked like a New England IPA, it was so cloudy, mm -hmm. right? That's the best way to describe it. Um, but the funny thing about having all that trube is that after fermentation finished, that thing crashed hard hmm. and it was crystal clear in the fermenter. Yeah. And I've got a couple of pictures of that that I'll, I'll hopefully attach in this video. But it was crystal clear in the fermenter at the end of it. Like I said, I, I pitched one package of uh, the Lalamand Dry Kosh East, because nice. I just wanted to try that again. If you remember that cream ale a few weeks ago that I used a blend of US05 and yep. Kosh, yep. it had like a lot of fruity ester that was just bad. In fact, that keg is now out there in the somewhere. lawn somewhere. Um, <laughs> Outside. But this doesn't have that uh, ester quality. No. Right? It's pretty, pretty Kosh. Yeah, no, that's why I was, I was able to pick out the style. Very clean. Now, let me just tell you the hops real quick. Uh, I did 14 grams, which is half an ounce of cluster, 7.8 alpha acid. Yeah. Because these are the hops I had. I didn't have anything more traditional. Cluster, so I had some cluster for bittering for the 40. Uh, I did like a 40 minute boil. I was, again, trying to, yeah. you know. And then, um, then I also did seven grams, which is a quarter of an ounce of cluster at like 10 minutes to go. Cool. So, um, actually, the cluster is nice in this. Yeah, it works. It works really well in this, actually. Yeah, I do. It's uh, pretty good. It wasn't great in the, cl uh, the cream ale. And I think that's here. a yeast problem in the cream ale versus the hop. Okay. You know? Because um, it, it, does, it does work here. If the, if the cluster was throwing some sort of weird flavor in that other beer, it would have been here, too. Because it's the yeah, same, it's exact same hops. No, it's no, the same. No. I had like an eight ounce bag. I'm so. with you. I'm with you. I'm just saying that here it's, it's really nice. I mean, people yeah. like those. Mm. You know, probably yeah. uh, oh, at this point, like maybe 200 years ago, they were probably saying like, oh, you are Americans with your, your caddy hops. Yeah. Unrefined. Actually, yeah. This, this this actually tastes pretty good. Yeah. And it's really good. Um, I boiled this thing down and I kept on looking at the, the volume of water because I knew I wanted to have two gallons. Yeah. Um, so I kept adding a little bit of water to it because, it, I, you know, I was losing temperature, which really isn't a big deal. Um, just that you got to keep heating it and stuff uh, to keep the boil going. but. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna experiment with that a little bit more with the process. But. Got it. Any big takeaways from the process that you want to like? Well, I cut some time out of it. You know, 40 minute mash, 40 minute boil. But it was and, that uh, like a so batch think, size thing, or is yeah, that no. Like well, well, the other thing. So, I did it because I just. W the reality is we all mash for like 60 minutes, but you don't need to go that that long. And so for this batch, because it was like really cold in the garage, and I didn't, you know. I just wanted to go fast. I wanted to see if I could go fast and produce a good beer. And so I did. You did. Um, so that worked out. And maybe I'll continue with that. Maybe I won't. Again, I'll probably experiment with mash time in the future. Um, uh, but the big takeaway here is that it's pretty convenient. This, the other reason why I wanted to do the small batch is because ramping time for heating up less than two gallons, like a gallon and a half of wort on a, on a 40,000 BTU burner, 100,000 BTU burner, it's pretty quick yeah. versus trying to do like eight gallons right. to a boil nope, so right. it, that saves time too so um you know i end up brewing five gallons of beer and i probably don't drink all five gallons usually we taste it on camera and then i need to make room so i figure out do i want to hold on to this do i want to bottle some or do i just pour it out and put the next beer in um, but i think doing a two gallon batch um i like that idea you got to give it to your brother-in-law i mean that's the other option i gotta too. do that yeah but he just wants new england ipa so he, you know, this diversity of beer style. Well, this is this is super nice beer. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, I, I look forward to other 
Brewing the bab, brew in the bag, not you know, bab, yeah. but bag experiments from you. I think that uh, learning more about this process is going to be good for your growth as a home brewer. I mean, you know, you're kind of, you know, I, uh, getting up there in the in the I years. Know. I got to do something different. You got to do something different. Um, don't worry. The next experiment that's going to go through oh, the brewing the bag process mind. is going to blow your mind. I, I need a moment. I know it's going to be epic. All right, cool. I, I look forward to it. That's great. Right. This Coles came out great. It like, is good. It's a simple. Too bad I only have two gallons. <laughs> <laughs> two gallons minus we'll, two pints. We'll do very quick sips. Yes. And like savor each one of them. But that's. Hey, great. Mike, can I smell that Coles? No. Nope. It's gone. <laughs> it's, it's gone. I hope you enjoyed your yes. eight ounce pour. But now I get to call my all my beers like reserve. <laughs> This is Kolsch Reserve. People will be like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Throwing bows. Exactly. Like, they're lining up. Like, they're lining oh up. God. That's how you create demand is just don't brew enough of it. All right. So stay tuned for more Brew in the Bag experiments from Mike. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. If you like notifications, I don't know, bang the bell. I have no idea what the hell that means. But for John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. Brew on. Cheers.